Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm joined today once again by my friend Tom at the two-gun match, and we are doing uh, World War II two-gun on the Elbe. Yeah, <laughs> it should be a lot of fun. I know we've talked about World War II stuff a lot. I've shot it a lot, and it's always fun to come out here with actual fun guns. Mostly proper kit, yeah. So I'm shooting an SVT-40 here. Uh, be my first time running one of these in a true competition, and I'm really curious to see how it handles. Okay. Yeah, I am running what everybody should recognize, the M1 Garand. Uh, I the have best rifle. Quite a lot. Uh, a lot of people know it as one of the greatest implements of battle ever devised. Uh, whether or not that's true is arguable, but I think in this head-to-head, -head, uh, I might have the edge. So you've got better sights. Yes. Uh, you've got eight rounds. I've got ten. True. Which isn't a lot of difference, but it might be enough on two-gun style stages. There that's may be true. some places where that's... Where I have to reload more often, more frequently, and at weird or inopportune times. Yes. So... Although, yeah. I have the shorter, lighter, handier rifle. It is weird to think of the M1 as being the shorter rifle of a pair, but it is by a not trivial margin. Um, now, a Soviet soldier would almost certainly never have both a Tokarev and a spare extra magazine for it, which, by the way, they did issue, and also a pistol. But I am running this with, well, a Tokarev. So I actually have a World War II Russian Tokarev that I'll be using today. And uh, for a pistol, you have, predictably... The 1911. Naturally. Uh, as should be expected by everybody. It is classic. Uh, once again, like, same thing with the gear. Generally, a soldier of the era would not have both running at the same time, so... No. The gear isn't exactly 100% accurate, but it's close enough. Same here. Yeah. Uh, but I do actually have Russian World War II fatigues with breeches, which are like some of the most uncomfortable pants perhaps ever. These are a little- Stylish though. Apparently. Uh, and the hat here is not period appropriate, but it's the closest I have. So we're going with the, uh, the anachronistic World War I style yeah. cap. Oh. Well, they probably pulled everything they had out of storage anyway, so at some point, at some time, some guy... Some poor schmuck did get issued one of these at some point, and was happy to have a hat. Yes. So, all right, well, let's dive right into stage number one. All right. All right, here we go. Through this whole match, we did have a caliber rule in effect, where if you were shooting a pistol caliber carbine, you had to get three hits on steel. An intermediate caliber, like 5.56, you had to get two, and a full power caliber, like 7.62 by 54 rimmed or 30 out six, uh, you only had to get one hit on steel. So that was going to work to my benefit and Tom's benefit a bit here. Uh, this one was pretty easy on, on steel at the beginning, and then we had a swinger and a plate rack with pistol, which was definitely the more challenging part of this stage. So the match isn't officially uh, 1911 versus Tokarev, but I guess we're going to see a little bit of that. Um, this is a, a 1944 dated uh, Russian production Tokarev. It's a vet bring back, so it doesn't have a safety. It doesn't have an import mark. I really like this pistol. And it works pretty well for me, I say, as I miss three shots in a row. But uh, all in all, the pistol itself does pretty well. Um, I had a few issues with it. Shooting relatively small targets here, yes. and of course, need one last shot. There it is. Well, Commissar, I'm disappointed. You ah. wounded him. Yeah, I'll try to get him in the head next time. Sorry. Not a proper World War II video without some good uh, Russian Commissar jokes. Tom also has no trouble with the rifle section here with his trusty M1, possibly the greatest battle implement ever devised as of 1945. So he'll clear that and then move on to the pistol section. Uh, Tom's going to have a little bit more trouble than I did here, but not much. Okay. I don't know what it is about that uh, knockdown target that is giving him trouble because the, the plate rack doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. By the way, you'll see his pistol have that malfunction consistently through the entire match. It is, uh, it's an older 70 series Colt that should be decent, but nope, like last round in every mag jams up just like that. There we go, he finally gets it. And then weirdly has almost no problem with the move, the small moving uh, plates. 
Look, your shooting was pretty good, but you completely missed this guy. <laughs> like, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know what you're doing, but... Okay, things got challenging here. So we have a VTAC barricade, and you have to hit each target, well, a target, from every single one of the holes. So there are nine holes. There are three targets. You cycle left to right and then back to left and cross to right again. The top three are easy. The middle three are not that big a deal. Uh, once again, people with intermediate caliber rifles had to make two of each of these hits. Those of us with gigantic World War II battle rifles only had to make one hit on each uh, steel from each position. So I'm starting to have a few issues. It's a very long rifle to get in and out of position. And it's this little triangular port where everything just goes completely to crap for me. So you can't really tell in the video, but the VTAC is actually just at the bottom of a very slight incline. So in addition to having to get the rifle very low under through that port, uh, you're also lying at a slight downward angle here. I'm going to give myself a face full of Arizona range sand there with that bit of, of ejection. Uh, so yeah, I have to get very, very low, and then try and bring the muzzle up enough to get high enough to hit the target. Uh, I will have that issue a couple of times through the match. The last round in one of these magazines uh, jumps out. So let's go ahead and reload. I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, fortunately, I have the presence of mind here to move to the other uh, holes. There was no, uh, no regulation on what order you had to shoot the VTAC holes. And I was pretty sure I'd be able to get these two more easily than that triangular one. Not entirely sure why, especially with the little square, because it's not that much different. But by grinding my face deep enough into the sand, I was able to actually get that one. And then it's back to this really difficult one, and I timed out. So time is 120 seconds plus 10 second penalty for not getting one of them. Now, let's see how Tom can do. Uh, he also has iron sights. He also has basically no height over bore issue. That's one of the nice things about a VTAC with one of these older rifles is, you know, with an AR or an AK, especially with optics, your line of sight's way up over the bore, and especially these narrow horizontal slots are a lot harder to do with a gun like an M1 or an SVT where the irons are sitting literally right on top of the barrel. That's not an issue. So Tom goes to the easiest low port first, dumps the helmet, not a bad idea, and proceeds to uh, make them look pretty darn easy. His rifle is probably six inches or so shorter than mine. Um, had I been thinking about it, I probably should have been shooting from a little bit farther back away from the barricade, actually. Um, I think that would have been a little bit easier for me, but... So you can see there, this is a really awkward position to try and get into with these longer rifles. So there you go. Tom ends up 10th of the entire match, less than one minute. He crushes it. It's a fantastic performance. Here we have the biggest test of long range shooting for the match. We're going to start at about 150 meters. There's a full size silhouette and a Q silhouette down there or a mini. I can't remember which. And whoop, almost slipped with my totally tractionless jack boots there. Uh, we, with the big rifles, have to hit each target once from each of the barricades while touching the barricades, the tank traps here. And the big one's not a problem for me, but I'm kind of struggling on that smaller target sometimes. There you'll see that that same issue. My first magazine here, the, the, the last round in it pops out instead of feeding properly switch to the second mag. Uh, SVT-40s were originally issued with three magazines per gun. I only have two to work with here, but then I can also use stripper clips to top it up if I'm going to need more rounds than this second magazine has for me. Uh, as, as we make the hits here, we get to advance forward, so each barricade should be a little bit easier than the one before it, because you're always getting a little bit closer to the target. When I get to the very end, after the last set of rifle shots, I have to run to that barrel, it's kind of a black looking barrel from here, and uh, engage the targets with pistol, which is still a fairly challenging shot. That's a good 50 yard shot. So here I have, I've run out of ammunition, uh, or I'm about to run out of ammunition. 
I knew it would happen, so I pulled a stripper clip out of my pocket while I was moving to this position. Now we get to try to cram these rounds in. It works without too much difficulty. I've got one shot from here. Make it on the first round, that's nice. And then this is the last rifle position, this sort of T tree thing. Hit and <laughs> last round once again, jumps out of the gun, or second to last round does and I miss, and then I time out. So three pistol shots that were required are penalties and one penalty for a missed rifle shot. So is Tom gonna do fantastically well again or uh, or is he gonna have trouble as well? Let's find out here. Now, I cleaned the first two rounds as well. So, so far so good. All right, Tom, how can you do from the second one? Hit, hit, I see, okay, so. Uh, that's how this is going to be. One hit per target, the iron sights on the M1, and Tom is absolutely crushing this stage. He's doing phenomenally well, and it's really cool to watch him uh, just dominate this course of fire. Easy to reload the M1 on the move. Much easier than loading stripper clips. That end block is really easy to just jam into the rifle. Last rifle position here, hit and hit. He makes it look super easy. And then pistol, can he make the pistol hits? That's uh, also a challenge at well. Okay, can his pistol work? Let's start there. Hit, hit, hit. All right, and Tom makes the whole stage look amazing. All right, Tom, you totally showed us all. In fact, you were the best time on this entire stage from our squad. Yes. Um, a lot of guys with ARs, and you crushed them all. A lot of guys with optic-sided ARs, red dots on their pistols. Yeah. yeah. I kind of want to see if uh, you got a magic rifle here, or if you're just a lot better than me. Uh, well, I think there's <laughs> one way to find out. There is indeed. So I'm going to give this a try. Ready? Bye. All right. I've stuck Tom down in the corner there so that we have a comparison. Because... I, I had a lot of ego on the line on this one, I gotta say. The SVT was was not uh, a good performance for me on a stage like this. And uh, by the time I got to this point, I was starting to think that, you know what, maybe, maybe it is uh, not just me, maybe it is partly the rifle. I, I mean, Tom loves the iron sights on his M1. I do too. I think the M1 is a fantastic rifle. And... Uh, I'm happy to see here that I managed to actually go even faster than Tom did. So had I brought an M1 to this this match, I would have been doing really quite well, uh, just like he was. All right, here we go. Last, last shooting position, and there's my first miss. So Tom did the thing clean. I did it slightly faster, but with one miss. Now, I have very limited ammunition uh, for this match, I only had one box of ammo left for the Tokarev, so I've got one magazine here to give it a try, and I get I get a couple of hits, and then my mag runs dry, and that was like I didn't have any ammo to spare before the last stage, so I just gave up. What am I at? Seventy-five, seventeen. So you got me, well, but we both seconds. did pretty darn well with that M1. Uh, it's a good rifle. It's a f <clears throat> it's a fantastic rifle. <laughs> Uh, as much as I hate to say it, I think Patton may have been on to something. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. No worries. Whew. All right, one last stage here. This is also a combination of rifle and pistol. This one, however, starts with the pistol. And it's a course of fire that confused a bunch of people, including both Tom and I. So the idea is you hit the static plate, then you have to hit the mini Mozambique, and then you have to hit the static, and then the mini Mozambique again. So round, you hit the center of this target and it will pop the head target up. And when you hit the head target, it will knock it down. So it's this really cool self-resetting target that's also kind of evil because uh, it can be a pretty challenging target to successfully engage. But I managed to do fairly well with it here. So there's the, the head engaged run out of ammo again. One of the tricks to the mini Mozambique is if you're trying to hit the center, if you miss and hit the main plate, it'll bounce. 
but it won't fully engage and it can be kind of frustrating when you don't know uh, where you're hitting and why it's not working. Anyway, there is the pistol section completed. So I show the pistol clear to the RO, the range officer, and then I can move on to the barrel here. I'm gonna grab a rifle mag out of my pocket while I'm going, load on the barrel, and now we get to shoot a spinner. Normally, I would not be looking forward to this sort of engagement, but in this case, I'm using a big chunky rifle, and I know that it'll take two, maybe three hits to spin this. And in fact, it took two hits. So a couple misses in between there, but two hits, uh, spinner's over, and I am done with the match. Now, let's see if Tom can match that. Uh, we have very similar guns here. He's got, obviously, more recoil from his 1911 in 45 than I did in the Tokarev. Yeah, see here, he forgot the last engagement where I did an extra one. There's that same malfunction he's got once again. Just uh, never was man able to, to get free of that. So, Minimo, and knock the head down. Yeah, Tom's a good shot. We saw that in the last stage. We can see it here, too. All right, come on. You got this. Just a couple more hits. There we go. And that. And knock the head down. And malfunctioning on the pistol. Two world wars. There we go. <laughs> nope. 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 Come on. And Tom ends up giving up on that one because he's just about out of pistol ammunition. And so he takes the static hit that's easier that he knows he can get and abandons the last one. So he will have one penalty on this stage. And now uh, he is also going to need probably two hits on that spinner. He shouldn't have probably done it standing. There's no reason not to rest on the barrel, but there's one hit. There's two, all right, he's gonna need one more hit to get that over. Again, if you have support, you should use it. But there's his third hit, spinner is over, and uh, he still does quite well on the stage. Ooh, all right, uh, we don't know the scores entirely yet. But I think we can say, I probably maybe eked out a little bit ahead of you. Yeah, we know you clobbered me <laughs> on that one. Uh, the M1 is a fantastic rifle. Uh, it is, every time I bring it out to a match, it's like, okay, yeah, I can see why this was so beloved in its time. Now, I have to say, the Tokarev was nice to shoot. It's smooth shooting. Um, I had a couple issues where the last round in the magazine would kind of bounce up. I don't think that's a rifle issue. I think that's a one of my mags issue. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem for me was just the sights. It has yeah. open notch sights. Um, and I'm not that good with those sights. I feel like I used to be better and I'm getting kind of old now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but at the same time, you're going up against probably some of the best sights ever put on a rifle. So it's true. not a great comparison for any matchup. Yeah, but yeah. it was fun. Yes. So the que the first question is, would you rather have an M1 or a Toker? Well, I don't think it is a question. Not even yeah. a little bit. But now let's follow it up with the trickier question, which is, would you rather have the other two semi-auto World War II service rifles. Would you rather have a Tokarev, an SVT-40, or a Gewehr 43? I would rather go Soviet, simply because who I'd be standing with on the, the side, okay. just okay, the yeah. weapon. Yeah, aesthetically, yeah, that's I like that look better. It's, Honestly, yeah, I'd go with the Tokarev myself <laughs> over a G43. Same, yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of the Soviet guns had production issues, but. G43s definitely had some production issues and some active sabotage issues, yeah. and um, I feel like this is, it's a little longer right. than the Gewehr 43, but I think it's a little bit lighter. Um, it's going to balance better. Mm -hmm. The sights are essentially the same. The magazines are essentially the same, and this would be my number two World War II semi auto rifle choice. I can see that, yeah, absolutely. So. Still, number one for a reason, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes it is. Well, I really appreciate you coming out and oh, no uh, having some fun with us in uniform. I'm very ready to get out of this stupid hat. <laughs> <laughs> so shall we go get some lunch? I think so. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.